um, presentation is a planning update from Luke Mills of the Greater Cambridge Shared Planning Service. Luke, hello. Thank you, Chair, and good evening. Um, should have some slides in a moment. Um, Catherine, if you're happy to pop those on the screen, please. That's great. Thank you, Catherine. Um, yes, yeah, so good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Luke Mills, uh, a relatively new member of the Strategic Sites team at the Greater Cambridge Shared Planning Service. Um, since starting in January, I've been dealing with a number of applications and related delivery matters at North Stowe phases one and two. Uh, next slide, please. So several of us in the Strategic Sites team are currently handling applications across North Stowe. Uh, and I've sought to pick out some of the key recent ones in this presentation. Next slide, please. So going over a little bit of the same ground that uh, Dean did, so apologies for that, but I, I, I will be quick. Um, so uh, at the South CAMS Planning Committee uh, meeting on the 28th of January, Council has resolved to grant outline planning permission for phase 3A. Uh, the red line on this map shows the extent of the site. I appreciate it's slightly fine, may not be very clear. Um, it shows the site mostly on land between Oakington to the south, Longstanton and North Slow Phase 2 to the north, and the guided busway to the east. The Section 106 agreement is due to be signed soon, which will secure a significant package of obligations, including affordable housing, infrastructure and associated funding. Once signed, the permission will be issued, thereby establishing the principle of development for up to 4,000 homes, two primary schools, a local centre, mixed use zones, open space and landscaping. The detailed design of the development will be confirmed through subsequent reserve matters applications. Next slide, please. Phase 3B is in the same position, uh, having been considered by the planning committee on 28th of February. This map shows the extent of the site between Longstanton to the south, the guided busway to the north, and North Stowe, phase one to the east. The development includes up to 1,000 homes, a primary school, a mixed use zone, open space and landscaping. Uh, next slide, please. Land west of Station Road, uh, labelled on this map as Endurance Estates in orange, is separate but connected to Phase 3B. Again, there has been a resolution to grant outline planning permission and the Section 106 agreement is being finalised. The development includes up to 107 homes, employment and community uses, as well as open space and landscaping. Next slide, please. Digital Park would be another separate but connected development site comprising up to 80 homes and associated infrastructure. The outline planning application is a little behind the others, but it's expected to be on a South Cam's planning committee agenda very soon. Together with Phase 3B and Land West of Station Road, Digital Park would be included within a comprehensive master plan and design code conforming to the townwide guidance established by the Phase 1 and 2 design codes. Next slide, please. Uh, a fairly recent decision of note relates to an amendment to the Phase 2A reserve matters approval. Uh, the application sought to amend the design of the age-restricted accommodation the location of which is indicated by an orange dot on this map within the red area of phase 2A. The purpose of the changes was to improve the amenity of future residents, uh, to increase levels of sunlight and privacy, for example. Approval was granted in November following a resolution by the planning committee. Uh, next slide, please. Moving on to a couple of applications I'm currently dealing with, and uh, this one, of course, Dean mentioned a little earlier. Uh, so this planning application was submitted in February for a temporary heritage centre next door to Homes England's offices at North Stowe House. Uh, the centre would house and display artefacts from archaeological digs associated with the A14 upgrades and development at North Stowe. The RAF Oakington collection currently in Long Stanton would also be displayed. The temporary permission would expire after five years 
and the site would subsequently accommodate residential development in accordance with the designs for phase two. The consultation deadline is the 1st of April and the decision deadline uh, decision is due to be made under delegated powers by the 11th of April. Next slide, please. On phase one, a reserve matters application was submitted in December to seek approval for the design of a play area off Eagle Way. Uh, the consultation on the application highlighted a few detailed issues that need to be addressed. Uh, the applicant is now working on these with a view to amending the proposal. As things stand, a decision is due to be made under delegated powers by the 15th of April. However, this day may, date may yet be extended or the application could be withdrawn and resubmitted to um, address those changes. And next slide, please. So while there are several other applications being considered, uh, that wraps up my overview of some of the main ones. Uh, I hope you found that helpful. Um, there was a question uh, that was submitted before the um, meeting, which um, I was going to ask my colleague uh, Tam Parry at the County Council to answer. Um, Chair, would you like me to read out the question for content? It's quite long, but I'm sure I can read through it fairly quickly. Yeah, yes, please do. Please yeah. do, Luke. Good stuff. So um, the question is as follows. It's at the moment, Stirling Road is unfit to receive in increased traffic. The road is muddy when it rains, all cycle paths are blocked by parked cars and pedestrian crossings are not respected and cannot be enforced. This is a road used by children daily to commute. With an imminent increase in traffic on this road from the south access to North Stow, there is very high risk for accidents. What steps the local authority is taking to improve the road safety and allow for safe passage of bikes and pedestrians? Would an extraordinary adoption of Stirling Road by the council help to improve enforcement of highway code and ensure safety standards. So Tam, I hope if it's, if it's okay with you, would you mind providing an answer to that question? Um, sure, yes. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Transport Officer for North Stow from Cambridgeshire County Council. There's several aspects to the, to the question. Um, so the, the mud on the roads would be dealt with by LNQ, who are the master developer for the North Stow. Um, the cars parked on the what will become the cycle paths, that is a feature on many of the primary streets within North Stow. Um, and it's partly because the streets have not yet been completed by LNQ and they're not able to complete the streets because the the roads have been used for construction lorries, so we're not in a position to be able to finish the roads off because they would be damaged if they were finished now by, by the construction traffic. Um, because of that, the roads can't be completed until the construction has been finished for phase one. So that's roughly around about 2024, 2025 time. At that point, the County Council will then adopt the streets. Um, and they will have completed cycle paths on them with the WL Alliance. So if anyone does park in the cycle paths, then hopefully if South Camps continues getting um, its enforcement powers from the government for, for parking restrictions, then um, we will be able to ticket park cars in the, in the cycle paths. Um, because obviously people who live in on the primary streets, they've got parking that at the moment, they're just not choosing to use that parking that they've got. Um, the other issue is the pedestrian crossings um, not being observed. They are only advisory, unfortunately, because the, the roads aren't adopted and there's not any formal crossings in place. When the roads are completed, there will be humps, ramped crossings. So the, 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 the nature of the humps will hopefully encourage vehicles to slow down and give way to pedestrians crossing the road. Um, don't have any plans for separate crossings or anything formal. So. I hope that's helpful, Luke. Th thank you. Thanks, Tam. Okay. Luke, um, whilst Tam was speaking, um, uh, well, I, I've got two, I've got a question and a comment. Uh, the comment um, was from Hugh Venables and is really, I think, more for Tam. And that is, the, the comment is that parking in bike lanes also blocks sight lines at junctions onto Stirling Road, increasing risk to cars and cyclists. Yes, he's right, isn't he? So, um, yes, so, so the message to anyone who lives on the primary streets, you've got parking around the back, perhaps where you, that's where you would 
like to park your car, but obviously it's more convenient out the front and you like to see your car when you look out the front window. Most people do for some reason. So, you know, it's your choice, but we can't, as a highway authority at the moment, do anything to, to, to prevent that from happening, I'm afraid. Right. Um, a question, uh, another co comment. Well, it is a question from Vasilis. Why increase traffic then for three years on an unsafe road? This, this arrangement actually is not uncommon for big developments. In big developments, you do like to see a separate construction access, and that's what Homes England have got for their development. So you'll see as Stirling Road continues through phase one, it then becomes a much more um, completed road when you get into Homes England's area where the education campus is and where Evan Splash is located. That's because Homes England have got a separate construction access route, so they don't have construction lorries using their primary streets. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get back for phase one, so we are unfortunately just the situation we're in for phase one. Not not that uncommon, but you know it's something we, we look to avoid as much as possible, and I'm, I'm, I'm afraid it wasn't possible in this instance. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Tom, um, there's several, several comments and questions for you. Um, uh, I don't know who has asked this question. It just says North Stowe, so I don't know if that's a, a town council. I don't know. But anyway, uh, he, the point is, who will be liable for the inevitable major accident when it occurs? I, I don't know if that's one you can answer, to be honest. Probably I, I don't know if I can, I'm afraid. No, maybe that's one we need to take away and, uh, uh, and, and come back. Yeah. Um, whether it's a rhetorical question is another thing. Um, Perhaps, yeah. Yeah. Um, Vasilis again, major developments are intended for kids and families. This is unacceptable. Again, that's a, I don't think that's anything that you perhaps need to comment on at the moment. It's, it's, a, it's a statement. And um, Matt Webb um, makes the point, it, or just a question, can't the council at least increase the frequency of road sweeping to stop the mess? Yes, as I was saying, the, the road sweeping is not by the council, it's by LNQ. So perhaps um, that might be something that Stephen would be able to um, address if he's, if he's on, on the meeting later on. Okay, yeah, yeah, we'll try okay. and remember that. I'm sure we've got uh, quite a few officers here, I'm sure we've made a note of that one. Okay, um, that's it for you, Tam, for now. Thank you for, for fielding those. I do have a question for Luke from Neil Harris. How many houses are there in total for phase 3B with the extra developments west of Station Road? Yeah, thank you, Chair. So I just did a quick calculation on that one. So um, yeah, so that was for the phase 3B and then the two other sites that I'd shown on there, the land west of Station Road and then Digital Park, which, <clears throat> excuse me, does not yet have uh, a resolution to grant permission. But if that were to come forward as well, that would be a total of 1,187 homes. That's up to, uh, so there's scope for the detailed design to come out with a lower number, but not a higher number. Okay, thank you. Um, Tam, uh, I do have another question for you. It's just popped up. I hope you're still listening. <laughs> um, this is from Martin Smith. Is there an update on connecting the busway to the park and ride? Oh, good question. Um, I've been in discussion with Stephen in LNQ about whether or not they would be able to, to make that connection for us. Um, He's considering that. that. That's all I can say at the moment. Um, not wanting to, to to put him in a position um, to answer now. Um, but but yes, we're very very aware of that connection needs to be made, and one way or another, we will make it as soon as we can. Okay, thank you, Tam. Okay. Um, that I think we have now had all of the questions answered to date. If anybody thinks of any others for, for, for Tam or Luke, uh, just pop them in and we'll answer them at the end of the session, okay? I'm going to move on then.